Hey everybody, my name is Down, and in this video, we are going to be looking at how we can make a track that is an all day I dream type vibe, which is Lee Burridge's label. I've had the pleasure of seeing Lee Burridge many, many times. I've met him a few times, and I absolutely love his music. So this is what we're gonna be making today. Let's go ahead and dive into it, and I hope you enjoy. So I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. Usually what I do in these videos is kind of go along and write as we're going, but I find that giving you the final product this way gives you a better example of what the song will sound like. And then I kind of just break down what I'm going to be doing in the entire track. And then I'm going to give you the free download of the F of the uh, project file, the samples, um, the presets. And if you don't have the presets, you're also gonna get the audio of those, uh, of those tracks. So if you don't have the actual synths that you can use the presets in, you can still use the audio from the project file to have it in your own DAW. Uh, so let's go ahead and first things first, let's listen to just the kick. I'm gonna go to the, the very beginning of the track and kind of work uh, from left to right with the instruments and the sounds that I add in and explain my uh, reasoning for them. So first thing is the kick and it's not just a four by four kick. Um, it has the four by four, but it also has a second layer. So let's take a listen to that. So this is actually pretty common in Deep House, in Organic House, and these so, uh, lower tempo tracks. They have this groovier kick that is complementing the bass line and the actual kick. So what I did uh, for this kick and the um, sub kick, and not sub as in specifically sub frequencies, but kind of like the counter kick, uh, I have two layers here. So I have the kick and I have this second kick. That's just the low end. So I did with the sample. It was a little bit too punchy, so if I go back, you'll hear it's a little bit punchier, a little snappy. Um, and I just wanted to take out a little bit of that uh, of that transient because I don't want it to be so snappy. So what I did is I pulled this forward. I could even go a little bit more, but I want a little bit of punch. And then I rolled off a bit of EQ on the high end, so without the EQ. Ooh, really, really high end uh, kick, a lot, of, a lot of sharpness in the high end. So I filter that out, uh, then I have some compression, some multiband dynamics compression, which is just kind of taking off a little bit of each of the frequency areas, the high, the mid, and the low, and then uh, another EQ just to Okay, uh, and let's go into the second kick here. So we open up the piano roll. You can see that I have this kick on the fours, and then I have these little offbeat kicks. And it's just adding that extra little bit of groove. Um, and what I did with this one is the same thing. I just took out the, the intro uh, or the beginning of the transient because I don't need that punchiness, that snappiness. For this kick, it's just low end. It's just that kind of feel. So, uh, wow. Okay. So what is really important with this is that if you do this, if you move the sample ahead like this, you can see that over here there's a zero mark. So this is positive one, and this is negative to one, and this is the zero point. So if you have the sample coming in anywhere but the zero, uh, you can get popping sounds. So let's try and emulate that right now, or replicate that by taking off the fade in, and let's see if we get that snapping. That popping, maybe I take the EQ out. It's a little hard to hear, maybe we'll do it on the other one. Get rid of the fade in. It's really hard to hear, but there's a little, little pop at the beginning. It almost sounds like the, the transient of the track, of the kick. So with the fade in, and with the fade out, hear that really, really quick pop at the beginning? It almost kind of sounds like it's the, the hammer or the mallet hitting the kick, but it's not. It's actually a popping sound. And we don't want that because it, it sounds bad in our mix and it pops and it can throw our meters off which is really really important uh, because it can be really really loud and you don't really even hear it sometimes just by fading in one or two milliseconds it fades in from that zero point uh sorry it fades into that zero point from wherever it is so if it's starting you know if you're you're looking all the way up here i can use i guess i can use the computer screen if you're all the way up here with your transient you're starting it here the fade in will kind of allow you to fade from zero up to that point in just the one or two milliseconds so click on fade in, go up to, um, you know, maybe 2.10 milliseconds. 
and we don't have that pop anymore. So we'll go back to where we were here and go back to our lower kick. And same thing, 2.74 milliseconds, and we can move that back over here. So that's really important to note. Uh, and then I think that was over a little more. Okay, so that is the kick drum and just a little bit of compression as well. And okay, let's move on to the, uh, let's go to the bass riff. So this is uh, my, my bass line. It's a little bit crunchy, uh, a little bit distorted. I'm gonna take a little bit of that cutoff. Um, That was a bit saturated actually. Turn the drive down a bit. That's better. So this is a serum preset. I love using serum. I'm using the Juno uh, with the mirror on. So that just kind of reflects this, the uh, the waveform there. You don't actually have to have this on. Turn that off. So it's just a Juno. It's a squarey wave. Uh, it's a square wave, which is a little bit slanted down closer to um, like a sawtooth. So it's got a really nice, um, really nice harmonics to it. Turn the filter off. Really nice sound. Uh, I'll turn these filters off too, so you can full, hear the full effect here. So by adding, uh, and then it has a sub actually as well. So there's a sub frequency, such so a sine wave, adding that low, low frequency. And the reason I have these filters on is because I'm adding that harmonic content. If I'm just using a sine wave, it sounds like this. But with this harmonic content, you're filling up that lower area of the spectrum and you're giving yourself more room to work with in, in a sense of, uh, sorry, less room to work with, I guess, but you're giving yourself more sound to work with in, in a sense. Like you can hear it better on laptops and on phone speakers and even just even on a good system, that's gonna give it that warmth, that saturation that's going to help it punch through the mix a little bit better. Uh, okay, moving on to what the actual baseline looks like and what it is. So the key is in D sharp. What I want to mention is that the baseline is really important, of course, but it's important because it kind of sets the, the energy of the driving force behind the track. So if I take out this higher octave here, it's going to sound a little bit more, a little bit proggier, I guess. Uh, it just does sound a little bit different. So let's take a listen. And with the kick. So I'll put the octave back in. It's a little bit more uh, more swingier, more groovy. Um, it just gives it a bit more of like an upbeat vibe, just very slightly. And it's, it's little things like that that can actually make a pretty substantial difference in the overall vibe and energy of the track. Uh, one thing I wanted to note is that I'm having a lot of sidechain compression going on, like quite a bit of sidechain compression going on because there is going to be a lot of competing frequencies. Uh, we have this bass, we have this accent bass, and then we have this pretty thick bass line. Uh, so that is important to note. When I go down to the mixing process, um, like a final mix on this, I would do a lot to really, really establish that the mix is working in the low end. And to be honest, with this much low end information going on, it might be tricky and it might be better to actually remove these groovy little sidekicks here um, or make some space in the actual baseline, something like this. Um, you know, let's do that. Let's just do that. Okay, so we made a little bit of room. I'm gonna copy and paste that all the way over and copy and paste that here. And that just gives a little bit more room for the kick to push through. And I'm actually gonna change this and take this one right out of the kick. Because I have at that spot the octave higher, which I don't wanna get rid of. So now let's listen to the bass with the kick. Uh, 
Uh, that is not the right spot. I should have removed the other one. There we go. And there we go. Cool. Uh, moving on. So this um, this preset, like I said, it's very, very basic. The only thing I have on it is this filter. To kind of give it like a bit more punch. And that's just this envelope here with a sharp decay, uh, low sustain, and a pretty, pretty quick release. So that's just kind of opening up the filter a little bit, so it's more like boom, 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 boom. Um, wow, I'm really great at emulating what these sounds sound like. Um, okay, moving on to the drums. So this is uh, this is like I know that I say that these parts are really important. The bass is obviously important. The kick driving is really important. But each of these parts of this of these uh, of this song has its own place in being very important in the construction of the song. So uh, again, very obvious, but any parts of these tracks or any parts of these sections of the track that are not fitting will totally throw off the track. So uh, with the drums, you wanna have really um, a lot of deep house, uh, organic house. They have like these sounds, these like maybe steel drums or bongos and congas and all these instruments that uh, I can't even pronounce um, because they're from, they're, they're derived from places like Africa and Asia. And they add so much value to these deep house tracks. They make you really feel immersed. So it, it really kind of makes the whole track feel very organic and very realistic when you can implement these really uh, realistic sounding sounds. So to get this organic feel, we have to use things like groove pool, we have to use swing, we have to use different velocity measurements, um, and this can make it sound a lot more realistic and a lot more organic. So what I've done with the drums, let's just take a listen to the, the very first beginning of the track with this drum loop. So you can tell there's a lot going on, but it sounds good it sounds like it's supposed to have a lot going on there's a lot of space and if you're wearing headphones or with good speakers there's a lot of width to it and uh what i really really like about uh, my percussion and progressive house and deep house and a lot of percussion um like percussion heavy songs is when you're listening and it actually is hard to identify where the sounds are coming from what sound is making what um, there's so many layers and individual instruments that are coming together to, to fill that space and, and it, it makes it difficult unless you're really really paying attention to the sounds it makes it difficult to hear what is actually playing so if i go to the more busy part of the track and just take a listen to the drums and I'll, i hope you see what i mean So I guess, admittedly, it's not overly complicated for this track, but there is quite a lot of information, especially in the shake loop that I have here. It's so groovy because there's just, there's three different grooves going on in that one shaker loop that are complementing each other. And that can really bring your track to the next level in terms of professionalism. So uh, let's let's break down these, these sounds here. So I have this hat, um, I have two hats here, and this is where I'm gonna kind of go into more detail. Um, so in the drum rack, I have two. I have the shaker. Oh, this isn't even turned on. My bad. Uh, so all the drums here. So I have the shaker. Um, and then I have a bit of delay actually being returned back to the track. So if I turn off the delay, this is what it sounds like. So you'll note that there's two drums going on here. There's the hi-hat here. Uh, and then I have this. And what, why this is important is it's adding value to the drum loop, but I'm just it's very simple. All I did was take the, uh, the hat on the offbeat. I've added a second hat. So I go this hat on the offbeat, whatever. But then I take all of them, right? And I duplicate them into the next spot here. And then when you have them all selected, you can go down and click uh, Control or I think it's Command for Mac and just kind of skew across like this. And then it's going to lower all the velocities at the same time. And now when you listen, 
it's turned down the velocity or like the volume, uh, which is the velocity in this case, down. So it's more groovy. It's you're hitting that drum twice, but with the velocity high, it's it's too much. So we have the velocity lower, and it adds a little bit of that that groove aspect to it. And you can go in and add like a couple more of these, maybe even really really quiet, like bring that really far down where it's almost even inaudible. And these are the little the little things that are gonna just be really subconscious that are gonna make your track more interesting. So see if you can even hear them. So this one. It's so subtle, but it's adding value to the track. So that's what I did with um, with these hats here. And then I have the second hat, uh, and that is following the same groove pattern that I have. So it's the same pattern over both here, but it is adding that extra little bit of um, groove to the track. And it's just, again, very subtle. You probably didn't even notice it when you were listening the first time. So it's, it's a, a great tool to use to add a little bit of randomness to your track. And you can go in and actually use groove pools as well to push this even further. So uh, if you don't use groove pools, you don't know what groove pools are, uh, they are a uh, thing that Ableton has here. So if I click on this, this wave icon, there is groove pool. And let me just move myself for a second here. Whee! Whoop. That was fun. Go, Whee! Anyways. 10 years old, uh, you can go into the groove pool and you can search for different grooves. So if there's nothing up here, you can right click and browse groove library. It's going to bring you into your browser and it's going to show you all these different grooves. And when you click on them, it gives you like a metronome sound, make sure the headphones are on, of what this groove is going to sound like. And then you can drag and drop that groove onto a MIDI clip. So if I drag it onto here, I can see now in here that I have my MIDI, uh, my groove and I can choose different grooves that I have. And then you go into the settings here. So now when I play it, just the sound. So it's hard to notice, but there is a difference in the actual groove. And if I hit this commit button, you'll see the MIDI information change. It's very slight. See the difference? So just by doing that, we're adding just a little bit of swing to that sound. And we can add even more by doing a little bit of randomness. And we can also change the velocity. So I don't want to change too much, maybe 10%, 14%. Uh, if we, actually, if we put it to 100%, and you look down here, you'll see a difference in velocity as well. See how crazy that is? How much of a difference that is? So we add just a little bit of velocity, like, yeah, let's put 9%. Timing, that's fine. Uh, with different grooves, sometimes the timing is really obvious. This one's not too obvious, so we'll leave it at a pretty high number. And we'll commit. And now just those MIDI tracks, uh, MIDI clip is going to have a little bit of, uh, you know, it's nudged a little bit to the left or the right. It's nudged a little bit to the left or right on this one and this one. And the velocity is different. And it's going to make it sound much more organic and humanized. And this is going to be much more subconsciously interesting. So I won't dwell on this. Anymore, I'm going to just duplicate that MIDI track that's important as well. If you don't duplicate that, it's only going to affect the one MIDI clip. Uh, clip. And there we go. So now we have this even more interesting shaker loop. Um, and then I'm going on to the clap here. So the clap is uh, something I want to touch on, especially because um, the claps in these deep house tracks are very, very tight sounding. They don't have too, too much high end. They're not these big EDM claps. They don't have too much of that like really crunchy sound. They're more tight sounding. And I love how some of these claps can sound and these Volencentier tracks, they just have such amazing snares and amazing claps. And they just complement the kick so, so much. And to get that in this, we can listen to what my clap sounds like. It's still a little high. Um, but what I did is I took two claps. So I have this clap here. And I have this clap. And they're both a little bit crunchy. So what I did, um, get rid of all the other ones here. So what I did is I changed the receive from, I think it was at A, and I put it to A3. So now what happens when I hit um, the drum pad, 
it plays both at the same time. So you can change this receive to whatever you want in your piano roll so that when you actually open it up, you only have to do um, you know, one note here. Otherwise, it would look like this. And then you have to write it for both, which isn't a bad thing. We can keep it like that. We can even make it, you know, nudge this one over a little bit. And nudge this one over a little bit too. Why not, right? Make it even more interesting. Uh, and then if we go solo each clap, I actually, it sounds a lot different without the, what I've done to it. So, huge difference, right? So what I did is I transposed it my two semitones. I just brought it a little bit lower so I get a little bit more of that tight lower clap sound. Uh, I fade it out and then I brought this really, really close to the beginning because I only wanted that initial transient. So if we go back, we still have that tail end and we bring that really close and really fade it out. We get that nice crunch, um, really tight sounding clap. Same with this one. If we turn the, all these off, A huge clap, but then fade it out, transpose it up five semitones, and then both them together. And then I panned one slightly to the left, one slightly to the right. Lastly, I did some EQing to try and tame the high end a little bit because it's still pretty crunchy. Okay, I gotta fix that. I'm just gonna put this back to. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to just duplicate that uh, because I changed the clap in the MIDI track. I didn't uh, didn't duplicate it yet. So I'm just going to do that. Cool. And then, of course, I want to do some compression. Even glue compression would be good here, but I'm going to just use a regular compressor. I think it's being sent. Yes, it is. It's being sent to the drum reverb. The drum reverb tail seems a little long. I'm going to reduce that a little bit. Perfect. And let's listen in the rest of the drums one more time. Maybe a little bit too much low end. Beautiful. Uh, one last thing we can do to the clap to make it sound really good is the has effect. And this is a, a stereo widening effect to make this, it delays the signal from left to right. Uh, actually, let, let me move myself back over here. Hopefully, oh, you probably didn't see any of that compression. Did I even realize? Oh, maybe you did. Hopefully. Well, there's the compression there. Uh, Wee! Back to my original home. Um, so the has effect is going to make a stereo width from left to right or right to left. And it's going to be about seven plus milliseconds to about 40 milliseconds before it becomes really obvious. And you can do this on one of your claps. And it'll make it sound really wide. To achieve this, all you need is a delay. Uh, and then you put the feedback to zero, dry wipe to 100%, and change this from sync to time and put it at between 7 and 40 milliseconds. And the more you go up, the more obvious it'll be. Be careful of stereo phase issues when you do this, though. Always check in mono. Uh, disclaimer. Okay, moving on to, uh, we have this extra hat here. So this is uh, important in the track because it's adding a bit of energy. So we'll listen to the loop here, uh, just the drums, and you'll hear, um, there's also shakers here that are added in. So these are really pretty quiet. Um, but you'll notice the change in energy as I bring in this extra hat and these shakers just to keep the track going, keep it interesting. Super simple. Just an open hi-hat, no fancy business. Uh, just open hi-hat on the offbeat. I did fade it out a little bit because again, it was, tail was a bit too long and I transposed it down three semitones. Okay, and keeping in mind, uh, I'm doing this transpositioning, um, I'm transposing the notes in terms of where they are. So this note is in C, my track is in D sharp, therefore if I go down three, that will be uh, an A sharp, 
um, C to the B, to the A sharp. So actually, should this, this should be two semitones so that it stays in key. So I go from the C to the B uh, to the A sharp, and then the A sharp is um, a fifth down from the D sharp. So that should have actually been two semitones. Good job, Brennan. Thanks for catching that. Okay. And that just makes sure that it's in key. Uh, it's in key with the rest of the track, tuning your drums. Okay, last but not least, we're talking about the percussive elements. So I was talking about like those ethnic sounding drums. Um, what I like to do is put a bunch of different bongos and different sounds into drum rack. And then I just kind of jam around with the different sounds here. Uh, we could even go and, and maybe add another one. Nah, I don't like that one. But going in and uh, doing this is kind of how I, my process works. I just go in, I add a few uh, different sounds in um, in my drum rack, and then when I play around with it, I just try different sounds, and it makes it so that you're not just repeating the same thing over and over again. And a really good tip for this is to add the same bongo twice. So let's duplicate that, and we can name this one bongo twice, and uh, and then change this one just slightly. So the exact same, both these ones. But then if you change this one, maybe the attack's a little bit different. Um, maybe it's just like slightly different. You fade it in. Maybe you um, pitch it down slightly, just transpose it. Maybe a fifth. Um, spread the pan a little bit. Things like that. Maybe not a whole fifth. Maybe just go a little bit of detune. Just do some, some things like this. Change the pan, maybe slightly change the volume, and then go into your actual piano roll and change. So the bongo twice comes in maybe the second time. Where is it? That's on E6. Okay. Oh, it's the same. So that's good. Uh, the good thing to note is when you duplicate something, it's going to keep the same same receive. So I got to put that on a different receive. So we're on B6 here, and now it'll show up. There we go. Uh, and then change out one of these. So this is the bongo. The one you duplicated is right above it. And it's just slightly different. Almost not noticeable, but subconsciously, it's going to be more interesting. So we can just duplicate that throughout the track. This video is becoming a little bit long, so I'm going to move on to the next part of the track, or this. Uh, so one more time, we can listen to just the drums. Um, and maybe now you can hear everything going on. Oh, there's one more drum, right here. Just another tom. Oops, don't want to show this little song yet. A lot of it is about being subconsciously interesting, making it sound very interesting on a level that's not totally obvious to the listener, so that they're not, uh, I, I mean, it depends on your style, but a lot of the deep house tracks, uh, these organic house and tempo, uh, organic house tracks, they have that element of just being very, very organic sounding and sounding realistic. And that's how you achieve that. A lot of different, uh, you know, changing of the velocities, um, changing of different instruments, just slightly, things like that. Let's move on to the uh, the synths. So the synths, uh, again, as I'm mentioning, each each portion of the track has its place and why it's important. And the reason the synths are important is because if you just listen to this track like this, with everything else, it's kind of hard to know what kind of track this is. There's uh, you know, it could be a prog track, it could be a house track, it could be deep house. It doesn't really tell you because there's not enough information going on. You get an idea of what it's going to be, but it's not until you hear the synths and the melodies that it's really going to tell you the story of that song. So this is uh, probably the most important synth in the track because it has this chord progression that gives you that that kind of being that's that that drive of the track so let's listen to just that synth and i'll quickly show you how i made it i 
make sure I EQ at that low end. See that low end there? I don't want that. I don't need that. Nobody wants you. Nobody cares. Let's get rid of you like that. So that melody gives you the idea of the song. It tells you what you should be expecting for the rest of the track. Uh, it's a quite quite a nice melody, if I do say so myself. I wrote the melody. I did lie to you, though. I did not write, uh, I did not make the sound. So this is a synthetic string pad. It comes with Ableton Live 10. Uh, if you just search strings, uh, no, sorry, string, it is right here, synthetic string pad. You just th I just threw that on there and wrote a chord progression. I'll show you the chord progression really quickly. It's just essentially using the root note and then some notes above and below it. So we have the D sharp, and we have a fifth below it, uh, then we have the G, then we keep the D sharp and the A sharp, and then we're just changing that third note. And it's just giving that emotion behind it. Um, super, super simple pro uh, chord progression. Again, I'll include all the MIDI into the project file so you can actually just go ahead and grab all this. Okay. And your best friend with pads is a slow attack, slow release, and a strong, long reverb. Um, I believe there's no reverb on here yet. Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead, add a bit of reverb. Beautiful. Uh, okay, moving on to pigments. So this is, uh, I'm, I usually use Serum and Massive. I usually use only Serum and the Ableton presets for these, but I did use a pigments for this one. Um, but it's just a preset that I use and I'm just going to, uh, or maybe I made this one, I can't remember. But I'm just going to just bounce that to audio and give it to you as well. It's just simply a root note of D. And it's got a nice reverb on it. This is the round. Really, really nice reverb that I like to use. Some mid-side processing, so I'm pushing up the, the sides of the signal a bit. Some stereo widening, and then some auto pan to make it really wrap around your head in a metaphorical sense and literal sense, I guess. Uh, and then I have these fill pads, I call them, and they kind of fill up the space. They fill up the um, like kind of like I kind of like a fill of the the track is what they're called, like a tar fill. Super simple, just three little notes. Three little pigs. Um, they're off of the grid a little bit to kind of make them flow a bit more. Uh, not not too important, but they do add a little bit of value to the track. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Try to fix this. There we go. Okay, so then I have these fill pads here, and these add a lot of emotion. So really, if you really want to make the tracks like the LDI Dream and these these really melodic tracks, you need so many. Oh, we don't need, but a lot of the time you, you can use so many sub melodies. So these melodies are going to be melodies that are uh, complementary to the track. They don't have to be the exact same notes as the track. They just have to be in key. And I mean, they don't have to be in key, but they're going to sound better if they're in key most of the time. Um, so we have the D sharp, the F and the G. Uh, that's all going to be in the same scale of the uh, G minor, I believe, or the G major in with, with the F. Um, <clears throat> but it uh it sounds good let's let's take a listen to this synth mixed with the chords So it's subtle, but it's it's adding that background ambience and complementing the chord progression. And uh, I'm just doing a little bit of automation, opening up the filter here. That's all that is. <clears throat> and I don't remember if I mentioned it, but I am automating the filter of this super soft sound that I have, uh, just with an auto filter. So I think, or the filter inside the wave, um, the wave table. So the filter here, I automated it. So it's opening up this filter as it's going. And uh, before I get to this lead sound, I'm going to kind of just let you hear the lead sound as it's going across. Um, I did go into here. This is kind of what influenced the entire track, believe it or not. This is this sound right here. 
So simple, right? Uh, it's just an ARP that's being played downwards, and I'm gonna turn off this. And I'm gonna turn off all the delay and reverb, and just let you listen to the sound. That's all, that's all it is. And listen to how cool it sounds when you add a ton of reverb and delay. So cool. Um, I love doing that. I love adding tons of reverb and delay sounds. Just like literally anything. I could snap my fingers. I could get a cat meowing. I could get like literally a, a, a piece of garbage hitting a wall and you add reverb and delay on it and it just sounds amazing. Like 99% of the time. I love it. So all I did for this was just take an art, bounced it out, reversed it, put my thing down, flip it, reversed it, and I added tons of delay and reverb. And it just makes it really, really complimentary to the track. Um, I'll let you listen to that. Right? Like, it just sounds so nice and so simple. Uh, my clap sounds a bit weak. I'm going to take a little bit of that low end back in. Uh, okay. So, really, really simple. And then, I, again, another sound that I made. It's just a triangle. Like a ding, ding, triangle. I'm going to show you here. This is, what, this is that sound. I had a ton of reverb and delay. Sounds great. And what I did is I actually sent them to a return track. So I have this return with a crazy long feedback. It's 78%, 100% dry wet. Uh, I took the low end out because I don't want any of that low end. And then auto pan. So that kind of circles around your head again. If you're listening on good headphones or good speakers, you're going to hear that. If not, you probably won't. Um, okay, and last melody we have is this lead sound. So... The icing on the cake of these all day I dream type all day I dream type tracks, tongue twister, is having these sounds that come in that are um, a lot of time they're ethnic, a lot of time they're they're Middle Eastern, African influenced, um, you know, sitars, these these mandolin, I think that's an instrument, all these different instruments that uh, give it that like that lead vibe, I guess, I'm not articulating properly, but grabbing this lead and just kind of adding that b bit of extra flavor and that influence to it. So I actually made the synth a little bit different than I used to make. It was, uh, I got the idea from a preset where they took the white noise and they used the comb filters uh, instead of an actual sine wave or a sawtooth wave or an oscillator. So, um, or like a standard oscillator. So if I turn this on. So it's like a sine wave, but it's actually the white noise that's creating a lot of it. And the comb filter. Pretty cool, right? So we're using a comb filter to change the pitch. If I change this, it's going to sound wonky, so I don't want to change it because I have it right where I need it. That's why this oscillator is actually at 10 semitones up. If you don't have massive, this might be confusing, but essentially it's white noise being pitch shifted, um, for lack of a better term, and a little bit of sine wave. Again, if you don't have Massive, uh, just using a sine wave with a ton of reverb um, or using the audio that I'm going to give you will help. And then if you're not, um, I put this on here because I want to remind myself to mention it to you. D sharp major, I have the scale in here. In case you're not good at writing uh, your own music in terms of using scales, in terms of using um, finding the right key and things like that, you can actually just go to the MIDI effect scale and drag and drop that on and change this bass to whatever scale or whatever key that you want to write in. And whatever note you play on the piano, your MIDI piano, if you have one, it's going to auto-correct that in your piano roll. So you can't play the wrong note. So I have the D sharp major scale. No matter what I play on here, it's gonna be on in D sharp major. It's gonna transpose the wrong note that you press into the right note. Uh, just a little tidbit. Okay, wrapping up the uh, the video here, because we're getting on to quite a lot of time here, but uh, there was a lot to cover. And let's just, I'll let you listen to this and let's show you the lead sound here as we listen to the last part. So I'll start from here and we'll just take a listen to the whole track. Unsoloing it would probably help. Uh, I'm just going to go through and just kind of show you different parts of the track that I'm um, are kind of being influenced, influential.
actually gonna EQ it a little bit more high end out of this. Let the cutoff rising. Energy change here, a little bit more energy. Keep the track interesting. I have these coming in. as well. That's pretty much it. Um, a couple things I forgot to mention is right here, I like this part. I open up the filter really, really quickly at the end here. Then I have this big effect here, this impact. Uh, I transpose this up really high because it was pretty low. And I want it to be nice and high. And then of course, just a ton of reverb on there. <clears throat> um, this is important to note as well. So as I'm bringing up the energy of the track, I'm filtering uh, of the breakdown, I'm filtering in this lead. It's a bit harsh sounding. I think I turned this up too much. There we go. Um, as I'm bringing up the filter of this, it's important to note that I'm turning down the filters of the other noises because these are going to be f interfering. They're, they're all high end sounds. So as this one's coming in, I'm lowering this filter. So I'm kind of making room. I'm opening one and closing the other so that they're not both open at the same time. They're not both high end at the same time. I'm doing my hands here, but you get the idea uh, so that they're not interfering. And it doesn't have to be a ton. It doesn't have to be 100%. It doesn't even have to be 50%. Just even a little bit just to say, hey, this new lead's coming in. Pay attention to this and stop paying so much attention to this. And it doesn't have to be obvious, just on a subconscious level. You don't even want it to be obvious. You want it to be very congruent. You want it to be very organic. Uh, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy the project file. Definitely check the description below and you can download the project file, the samples, the MIDI information, the presets, I'm gonna include it all in there for you. Main takeaways from this song are to keep it really, really melodic uh, with a sense of counter melodies and sub melodies and melodies that are complementary to each other. That is the key to making it sound really beautiful is having all these different uh, melodies come together to create something that is really captivating um, for this type of track. And percussive elements, having really tight, nice percussion, um, but keeping it very groovy, swingy, and adding a bit of humanization to it by moving those sounds a little bit further to the left, a little bit further to the right, uh, 
and it doesn't just have to be your drums. It can be all your instruments, your bass lines, and things like that that can just be a little bit uh, more humanized to make it sound more organic sounding. So hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to check the description below for a download file of the actual project. It comes with some of the samples as well as the presets and for the synths. And if you don't have the actual synths, the, the VSTs that I use in the video, you can actually, uh, there's, there's also included um, some audio files for those stems as well. So you don't actually need the synths. You can use the audio as well for your own track. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe with notifications on. And if you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. It helps out tremendously.